Welcome to the channel, guys. My name is Alexi, and on this channel, I cover all things Azure. In this video, we are going to continue the Data Factory series. And if you missed the first video in this series, please check out the link in the description. This is the part two in this series. And in this video, we are going to create a linked service from Data Factory to Azure SQL database using Data Factory system as I managed identity. If managed identity is not a familiar concept to you, don't worry, I got you covered. Since I just created a video on those where I explained thoroughly what are managed identities and how you use them, the link can be found in the description. Now let's dive into today's subject, linked service from Data Factory to Azure SQL database. Okay, let's start with our setup here. We have a Data Factory and then we have an SQL database. And now we would like to build a link service between these two. But before we can start building that link service, we have to consider a few things. First, we have to consider the Azure resource that encapsulates the SQL database, and that is Azure SQL Server. I'm not going to cover SQL Server and SQL database as a Azure resources in that much detail in this video, but the main thing that we need to consider with the SQL Server is the SQL Server firewall, and we need to make sure that Data Factory is able to access through that firewall to that SQL database. Inside that SQL database resource in Azure, we have the actual database itself. And in that database, we have some database tables that we would like to write some data into, or maybe in some cases read data from those tables. But how we are going to get access to those tables, it, it's a bit different than with the blob storage that we covered in the previous episode. Since in this case, there is no Azure role-based access control role that would grant us the access to that database and to those tables. However, the actual database itself supports AD authentication, even though it doesn't support role-based authentication from the Azure portal. But this means that we have to create a user for the data factory to that database. We can create that user by using Azure Data Factory's system assigned managed identity, and then grant sufficient access for that user to access those database tables. After we have done that and made sure that there is a firewall opening in the SQL Server firewall for our data factory, and then we can establish the link service between SQL database and data factory. Now you should have a basic understanding how linked service from Azure data factory to Azure SQL database works. Now let's hop into the Azure portal and see how we can do this in practice. Now we are in the Azure portal and in the same resource group that we created in the previous video. Next, we would need to create SQL Server and SQL Database to this resource group. So let's go to the marketplace and search for SQL Database. Here we have the SQL Database. Let's click that and let's create one. Next, we need to check that our subscription and resource group are correct. They are. And then we need to name our database according to our naming conventions. Then we need to create SQL Server for our database. So let's create that and enter a name for it. I will change the location to West Europe because that is the big data center closest to me. Then we need to set up Azure AD admin for this database. Basically what this does, it will allow admin access for a set user or a user group to this database to manage it. And because this is my subscription and I'm the only user here, I will select me as the Azure AD admin for this database and the server. Now we can click OK. And then we can adjust our workload and compute and storage for the database. We would like to change the workload environment to development. Then we can configure the database and select the cheapest possible option. And that is basic with five DTUs. This will be around five US dollars per month. Then we can move forward. No need to change any other settings on this page. Then we can go forward. No need to touch the network settings and no need to touch the security settings or additional settings or tags. So we can just review and create this database. 
Now our database and the server are being deployed and this can take actually quite a while. So with some YouTube magic, we can now speed things up like this. And now our deployment has been completed. Next, let's go back to our resource group. And here we can see our SQL database and our SQL server that we just created. Next, let's open our SQL server and configure the firewall settings. Let's go to security and networking and let's change the public network access to selected networks. Now this would reveal my IP address, so I will hide it. And first I will create a firewall opening for my own IP address. So I will be able to access this SQL server from my home network. I will name this firewall opening as Alexi home. And next, I'm going to allow Azure services and resources to access this server. And what this does, it will allow any connection that is coming from resources in the Azure to connect this SQL server. In some environments, this option is probably not allowed to be used. And you have to consider some individual IP addresses for each resources that will be used. But to keep sim things simple here, I will just allow all the Azure services to access this server. And by allowing them to access this server, it doesn't mean that they can go and get some data from my SQL database. This just allows them to go through the firewall. But if they don't have access in the database to log into that database, they are not able to do anything there. So I just wanted to clarify that a bit. So it's not so scary as it sounds, but still we will now enable that. Let's save these settings here. And now let's open a program called Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS that will allow us to connect to our SQL server. Our SQL server connection or server name is our SQL server resource name dot database dot windows dot net. And we want to use Azure Active Di Directory with universal MFA to log into that database. And after pressing the connect, it should prompt us with the prompt in our browser that will allow us to authenticate to the database. And after we have connected successfully, we can navigate to our SQL database. As you can see, I only have now one database tied to this SQL server that we just created. And now we can open the users. As you can see, we have only few general users that are created by default. And next we would need to create a user for our data factory. And I will now write some TSQL here that will allow us to create that database user for the data factory. So I will write create user, our data factory name from external provider which will create a user for the data factory to this database. And then I will create alter role db owner add member our data factory name, which will give the database owners for our data factory to this database. And this db owner is something that you really need to consider in your environment that is it okay to grant db owner to data factory or should you use some other role since DB owner grants very, very wide access to the database and allows you to manage many things there that probably in some environments is not really okay. But again, when keeping things simple, I will now grant that DB owner for that data factory. So I'm able to do pretty much everything with the data factory in this database. Now I will execute these two lines of code and it will create that user and grant those rights for that user code ran through successfully as expected. And now we can refresh the user list and we should see our data factor user in this list. And there it is. Everything seems to be going according to our plan and everything is working. So now let's jump into data factory and create the actual linked service. Let's open the manage tab and let's click new. And now let's search for the SQL database. There it is. And let's create a linked service for that. Again, let's name our linked service according to our naming convention here. And now we have to select our Azure subscription, server name and database name. And then we will change the authentication type to system assigned managed identity. And then 
we can test the connection the connection is working so everything is fine so now we can just click create and now we have successfully created a link service to our Azure SQL database from our Azure data factory using system assigned managed identity. That's all that I wanted to cover today. Now you should have an understanding how the linked service from Azure data factory to Azure SQL database works and how to do this linked service in practice. In the next video, we are actually going to copy some data from blob storage to Azure SQL database. So stay tuned and see you in the next video.